I'm Piper Parabo. I'm really excited to be here today in a room full of creatives and world leaders, veterans and frontline activists who are united in accelerating the clean energy transition in defense of national and global security. Like many of you, I came here today to learn and ask questions and strategize around what we can do as artists and frontline leaders to help build the clean energy future that is now on our doorstep. We are at the Global Clean Energy Action Forum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the heart of the first industrial revolution. I'm really honored to have done an event right here in Pittsburgh, which is really a city known for clean energy infrastructure, highlighting the need for clean energy jobs and a just transition to a clean energy economy. There are 3,000 clean energy leaders from across the world uniting in the first ever global action plan to transition to clean energy. What I'm most excited about being here at the Clean Energy Freedom Campaign by Grounded is to see where business, science, culture, community, and government can actually work together in support of a just transition to a green economy. I'm excited to learn more about our energy future because there's a lot going on in the world and I want to see how that's going to change the makeup of our energy portfolios. We're at this moment of transformation and opportunity with all of this new federal money through the Inflation Protection Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, the CHIPS Act, so many states really looking at how we save this planet and also create opportunities for communities. Today's event's pretty exciting. We have Secretary Jennifer Granholm here today, and I think there's a lot of young people and also mentors to be here in this space, so really excited to learn more about the energy sector. The whole purpose of bringing everyone together was to create a sort of springboard, a launching pad for what happens next. Our mission is to hire and train 900,000 workers needed to build our clean energy economy and meet our climate target. We're gonna need 900,000 jobs created to make this transition to a clean, green economy. And instead of thinking we're gonna need 900,000 workers, I think about it like we're about to create 900,000 good union paying jobs. At the Global Clean Energy Action Forum, we want to make sure that the technological advances that we are making in the United States are worked on with our partners abroad. We can end wars by petro dictators tomorrow by accelerating the clean energy transition today. The truth is that they come to kill us. It's not about the special operation or whatever, that there's a huge war. What we want is to show that this uh, horrible situation with a war, it shows that clean energy gives you freedom. But this notion of countries feeling secure because they are not reliant upon sources you know, from countries whose values they don't share is just really important. Yeah, that really resonates with me, the idea of independence yes. because of clean energy. Right. This launched with just an idea to unite pop culture and the government and frontline communities and veterans around reframing clean energy as national security. Our military involvements, our uh, national security interests have long been formed by the impacts of climate change, the impact of our oil dependency. I think I have a hard time trying to understand the role in the U.S. military in actually achieving clean energy future, knowing that they've invested millions of dollars working alongside the border and surveillance industry. People are being put in danger with moving fuel, but also the U.S. military has a lot to own up to when it comes to affecting land. One thing that I think is super important is humanizing the issue like we have done here today. Um, I think that talking about the sexual assault that happens when there are more fossil fuels present, when there are more populants, my man camps um, is super important in talking about what are the actual implications to real life people, to my families, I have to worry about. So how do you think the U.S. military will respond in taking ownership of how they've affected the environment and indigenous communities? The issues you mentioned are extremely important. I know to the department and something they're taking very seriously and looking at ways it impacts people. To influence change is to be engaged, right? Raise your voice into these communities because they do care, they want the feedback. 
For the YouTubers who showed up, for the cultural influencers, for them just showing support for climate solutions gives me a lot of hope because with their combined reach, they access 450 million people. And with that audience, people won't be inundated with perpetual messages of doom and gloom. We can't solve the climate crisis. For me, it was like storytelling at scale, but connected to a movement to translate policy into creativity and to give local people, like locally, a global platform to tell th their own stories. It is about accessibility, because you don't want climate action and choosing to do the, the greenest thing to be for the elite, wealthiest, more privileged people. And then, you know, you've got people that are in survival mode that are just like, I'm just trying to pay rent, I'm just trying to feed my kids. If we want to make sure that we just don't recreate the same inequality of opportunity that has been allowed to persist, we actually need to do outreach, right? We need to take leadership from the folks who are already in those communities and organizing. Right now, like, the rules don't reflect the true cost to society of, of our fossil fuel addiction. And so if we want to really reach people where they are, then we need to make sure that at each key decision they're making in their lives, there is an opportunity, and in fact, the best opportunity yeah. is around clean, renewable energy. If we are to truly rebuild a middle class in this country and do so as part of a just transition to a green economy, there will be points of agitation and points of collaboration that require incredibly high levels of courage and integrity. So at the Solutions Project, we understand that the people in the communities closest to the problems of pollution, of economic degradation, of you know, environmental injustice are the very first to come to the solutions. We need a comprehensive program. We need to have research. We need a public policy. We need coalitions. We need communications. But it's all grounded in community organizing for, for real change. So we don't believe in empowering the community because we believe the community has power. We just believe that they need to be provided with the kind of support, technical assistance, and research that makes it possible for them to manifest their vision. When we look at how this money is going to be divvied up and how it's going to be put towards innovation, how are we bringing, making sure that everyone is being brought into this? We need companies who are taking this money to make a commitment and the government officials that are funding these companies to make a commitment that we're building the industry that is gonna benefit and lift all boats. The Department of Energy, we are incorporating in all of our competitive grants. You must consult with the community. It has to be a strategy. How do we ensure that younger generations closely work with elders and justice-oriented and labor union movements? Because I think what I've seen the younger generation in the climate and environmental movement is this emphasis of youth. There is no power if it isn't intergenerational. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of young people leading, that's an Anglo-American construct. People from the global south are always intergenerational. Power has to be shared. We have to be leaderful because we're talking about climate change. People are really starting to get it that we all live online and we live on phones all day. And so those of you who have built communities, you've earned the trust of your followers, and it really matters uh, that you use your voice, that you speak truth to power, that you ask hard questions like you did today. What I learned today at the Clean Energy Freedom Forum today is that there is a vast demand for green jobs and the importance of actually educating our communities to transition to those green jobs and to make sure that no one is left behind during this transition. I think that is super important that people who have powered our nation for the past 100 years, we want you to power our nation for the next 100 years, but in clean energy. Today I learned that clean energy can be a weapon against nations that are bullying people into using fossil fuels. I also learned that great leaders are in strong and independent women. And the last um, forum that we heard today was just truly inspiring and I got to see the leaders I really deserve. It's really the first time in, in my life that I felt a moment of real optimism and hope that we might actually be able to win this. My hope for tonight is that you're inspired to join this historic effort and work together to create this cultural shift. The change we fought for is here and it's now all hands on deck. I think as Americans, there can be a real sense of hope about the climate movement. Now that we have 
the money allocated to do it, now we get to do the work of making change and that's something Americans are great at.